Good afternoon, and thank you all for coming today, especially with the rain that we have had. Thankfully, it's not raining right now, but thank God for the rain because we really need the rain. And you know, when you think about it, uh, the rain has come to nourish and revitalize our lands. And today we have come out to nourish our democracy and revitalize our government. We are here at Freedom Park to support our wonderful new 26th Congressional District and introduce and endorse the next Congresswoman to our friends, neighbors, cities, counties, and the nation. And here at Freedom Park, it begins with a declaration of independence. And we have five young people here, the next generation, to help us with the Declaration of Independence. And we begin first with Kyle Higgins. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. Next is Dan Parks. Within the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal stations which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect for the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which have held them to the separation. Allison Adam. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Erica Adam. That to secure these rights, government, governments are instituted among men, deriving their power from the consent of the governed. And David Ross. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. And to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and their happiness. Thank you. my friend, 
our county supervisor, and the next congresswoman of the 26th Congressional District, Linda Parks. Closing down programs. There are future 
they need to be ready for a workplace and to be able to compete in that workplace. We the people, you know the Declaration of Independence doesn't mention women, but women are the backbone of our country. enjoy working with you to be able to be part of this campaign, to be part of a campaign where this woman is going to become a congressman, where you learn that you can also be a leader. It sends a tremendous good message to our, to our daughters. So I'm very pleased that we have young ladies here today. We are Americans, and we come together in times of need. We have struggling <coughs> families now. Our economy and the recession has hurt a lot of families. And we all know a neighbor that has lost a job, or we have family members that have lost a job, or there are people here today that have also lost jobs, they've lost savings, they are, are threatened with losing their home and their health care, and we need a government that's going to step up and help our families and deal with the problems. Instead of talking about whether pizza is a vegetable, they need to be focusing on the, what our country needs. Our senior citizens, they are the most vulnerable when they are on limited incomes in our, in, our, in our United States. They're on limited incomes. They need to make sure that they have their Social Security. They need to make sure that their prescription drugs aren't skyrocketing and they can't afford them. It's about their life. It's about their health. We need to make sure that they can age in place. We need as a, as a society to allow our senior citizens to age in place, that they can have services that come to their home. Instead of the more expensive residential treatment, uh, the, the residential facilities, and if they do end up having to go to a residential facility, we have to make sure that they're not being abused. And that is a big problem. We need to take care of the people of the United States, and, and our Congress needs to step up to the plate. We also need a government that's going to invest in America. Uh, they need to be able to get businesses to come back from overseas. We need to have incentives so businesses don't go overseas. We need jobs here for Americans. Uh, on Tuesday at the Board of Supervisors, I'll be bringing forward an item that will allow for the school district to take graduate students and get them on the job training. So when they do go into the workplace, they not only have the accreditation they need, they also have some work experience. These are the kind of things that we can do to help our students and to help people get back into the workplace. You know, just a, a few miles from here is Naval Base Ventura County, as mentioned by Claudia. It hires 6,000 civilian employees. It is instrumental to our economy, but it also is instrumental to our, our nation's security. The missile test firing range there is unique, and we need that base to continue and preserve in order to defend our United States. And just as we have the naval base and major economic generator in our county, we also have some incredible farmland. If you just walk outside, you can see it. Farmland that has a some of the best climate in the world. Farmers can turn crops over multiple times a year. We need to assist that, not only preserving the farmland, but assuring that we have the infrastructure so that they have the water that they need, that there's a guest worker program so they have the confidence that they have employees. It's a billion and a half dollar industry. We also need to make sure that our Congress invests in our nation's infrastructure. We have roads, we have levees, we have bridges that need to be repaired, and they have gone unmaintained, and they need assistance. You know, if there's an earthquake in the Sacramento Delta, Southern California could lose their water, not for months, but for years. It is unconscionable that we don't maintain those facilities, and it, again, is something our government needs to invest in. Thank you. needs to work. And for Congress to work, Congress needs to work together. If they work together, they can provide legislation, they can provide a balanced budget, they can provide certainty to our business community so they too invest in America. 
You know, Congress needs to not only consider cutting, they also need to consider spending wisely. You know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And our, our Congress needs to work together to assure that our dollars are well spent. If elected to Congress, I'll balance our budget. I'll work towards that. And I will also look at getting our bond rating up, which will come with that balancing by lowering our deficit. I'm not going to be one of those Congress members who refuse to pay our bills, you know, and bringing our economy to its needs. We do need to reduce our debt. We need to build a reserve, just as we did at the County of Ventura when I first came on. They, were they had a structural deficit, and we have built it to a balanced budget and to a point where we have the reserve, and we got our bond rating up. It is an excellent model. I become embroiled in the heavy-handed partisanship. I won't have lobbyists writing legislation for me. I will, as Claudia mentioned, put country first, put patriotism first, put the public and good government first, not party <coughs> politics. We need to have people who we can trust. We need people that we can trust. And what do we have right now? We have Congress members who are doing insider trading on the stock market. We have Congress members that are making money off of land deals. You know, it may be legal that they can have this insider trading on the stock market, but it shouldn't be legal. We need to make sure that we have honest people that we can trust working for us in Congress. We need to make sure that those same Congress members who may want to do insider trading aren't reducing the regulation on the stock market on, the, on Wall Street. We need to make sure we continue and have those regulations. You look at the super committee. The super committee got together trying to bridge that partisan divide that they can't seem to do in D.C. <coughs> members of the super committee made seven hundred thousand dollars. One, one Congress member alone, just for sitting on the super committee, he made $700,000 in contributions. And you look at SOPA, you know, the uh, Stop Online Privacy Act. You, in this particular case, you can tell how all the Congress members are going to vote. You know how you can tell? <coughs> because they've either got all the money from the internet companies, or they've got all the money from the Hollywood industry. And that's not how you should determine how you vote, and that's not how we should figure out how they're going to vote. <laughs> and how do we get that? We elect people who are not beholden. We elect people who are not beholden to the political parties, the PACs, the corporations, the unions. We elect people who are willing to represent residents, represent citizens, and only take contributions from individuals. We are in a really good time right now in that we have a congressional district, an open primary, and everyone is watching what's going to happen. The eyes of the nation are watching this congressional district. And I think because we have that attention, we can make our voices heard. We have the most incredible opportunity. In this election, we're going to have millions and millions and millions of dollars spent. The political action committees, the parties are going to spend more money. It may be the most expensive campaign in the history of California, right here in Ventura County's 26th Congressional District. And what an incredible message it will send to send someone who's not taking the PAC money, to send someone who's grassroots to, to Congress. What kind of message would that send the nation? This needs to resonate. I don't know anyone else who's refusing 
PAC money and party money, corporate money, and only taking contributions from individuals. And if I can do it, then another candidate will say, hey, she did it, I can do it. And soon you'll have people in Congress who aren't beholden to special interests. And that's the message that we can send with my election. Money doesn't buy elections. You know, they say I'm going into the hardest campaign in my life with one hand tied behind my back. Because I won't take special interest money. But I would not have it any other way. of mail, you're going to see lots of TV commercials and radio commercials and internet, you know, rumors and <laughs> everything you can imagine. And you know what? It's all going to be directed at me uh -huh. because I'm not beholden. And you have a situation here where um, one candidate uh, is looking to make sure I am not one of the top two in the general election. Uh, possibly both candidates where there's three big ones here that, that may win into that general election. And uh, I know that, for example, Tony Strickland does not want to see Linda Parks in the general election in November. Uh, so he is going to make sure to do the best he can to knock me down. Uh, he'd rather have a different candidate to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with in November because they know that if I do win into the general, I can win and become the next Congress. <laughs> super PAC money, party money, union money. Don't take the money and don't be beholden. And then you too can send that message. And if you've taken the money, I say, return it. Yeah. 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 We need 
to have a Congress that will work together, Republicans and Democrats. And unless voters are willing to take that step and vote for the best candidate, regardless of party, we're going to continue to put fuel on the fire of Congress and have the extreme partisanship. We need as people to take that bipartisan step. And I challenge you to do that, to work together. We need to have representative government that is not corroded by money and special interests at the expense of working Americans. Ventura County, send a message. Send a message to the nation that they will hear. I ask that you send me to Washington. Thank you. Thank you. 